Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, friends and colleagues, excellencies. Um, uh, my name is Mark Thompson. I'm the chief executive of the New York Times. Uh, and it's my pleasure and privilege to welcome you formally to this magnificent stoa of Atalos. It's the home of the Museum of the Ancient Agora and a unique collection of exhibits of classical Athenian democracy. And it's very hard to think of a better backdrop for our continuing discussions in this sixth gathering of the Athens Democracy Forum, which we're very proud to have convened with our good friends in the city of Athens and the United Nations Democracy Fund. As Yasha Monk reminded us this morning, in the second half of the 20th century, democracy was thought by many, especially in the West, to be the natural destiny of every nation on earth and to be more or less irreversible. It would ultimately spread across every continent, and once established, would be well nigh impossible to dislodge and replace with dictatorship or repression. But the founders of democracy in this city some two and a half thousand years ago knew better. For them, democracy was turbulent, fragile, always contested, always at risk from its own potential excesses, like populism and demagoguery, which, as we've heard, were well known to the Athenians. Uh, they took uh, stock characters and ideas from their comic theater and applied them to the politicians of the day. The iron was the sneaky dissembler, the politician who says one thing and does another. Uh, and another, perhaps more relevant uh, example, is the alizone, who is the braggart. The, the, the politician who can only talk about himself and his many achievements and won't let anyone else get a word in edgeways, who exaggerates and lies. It's hard to think of any parallels today. Um, they knew that democracy was a great form of government, but they also knew that it could fail. And we can't stand here without reflecting that this is also the first place in the world where democracy failed. Now today, we too are begin, beginning to be forced to recognize the fragility of what so recently seems so secure. The global spread of democracy as a system of government has gone into reverse. The pillars of democracy, fair elections, freedom of the press, independence of the judiciary, are all under attack and in some cases, in some countries, being toppled. And this is not happening in distant developing countries, but seemingly right under our noses. In many countries, legitimate criticism of the way traditional democratic politics is presently conducted is tipping over into attempts to undermine public confidence in even the possibility of representative government and into the fermenting of cynicism and hate. And at least one country, I'm thinking of Russia, seems set on a systematic covert attempt to undermine democracy in America and other Western countries. But in addition to enemies and false friends, democracy has its champions. One of those champions, Kofi Annan, spoke at last year's Democracy Forum. He died this summer. Kofi's wisdom and optimism will be missed by the whole world. At a time of great skepticism about political leaders, his achievements remind us how much one person of integrity, vision, and eloquence can achieve in a single lifetime. And I don't think it's too much to say that he will make a very worthy companion to Confucius and Socrates in Elysium. Now, our mission at this forum is to explore the forces threatening democratic rule and to draw on the ideas not just of our named speakers and panelists, but of our delegates on how best we should re respond, whether through politics, the law, journalism, business, or technology. So thank you for joining us here in Athens. Thank you for joining into this quest, both for better understanding of the challenges facing democracy, but also for solutions to them.